Hi, welcome to Draw Plans. I'm Tom Norris, and for today's tutorial, we're looking at a detailed section for a suspended timber floor. In other words, to create uh, a detailed section uh, with showing all the details as to how to construct a raised or elevated timber floor. Now, we've got a project, uh, one, of, one of our projects. Um, let me just pull it up here. Uh, this is a project that we'd done a few months ago, back in February, and uh, this is a pretty uh, standard 1970s uh, detached property or semi-detached uh, garage on the side, and it, the green bits are showing uh, the, the proposed extensions. Now, this was behind a garage and we ended up doing a laundry utility and adding on a kitchen. Uh, and we did it uh, with uh, oh, block and beam. We had a block and beam flooring on here. But on this side, t uh, client was looking to have uh, save a bit of money. So what we did was we proposed a SIPS extension on here and because the ground levels uh, were running sloping down sloping to the back it um, was ideal for a raised uh, timber floor so what it what I've got and what I've done is I have pulled the plans on here uh, to give you an indication so this is the we're looking now on the side elevation and we're doing this single story side extension but as you can see the ground levels are going uphill uh, let me zoom in a bit. So that's your actual internal floor level, that dotted line there. And I'm sorry if you can't see it. Make it a bit, uh, a bit uh, better, a bit, a bit black, <laughs> dark grey. Um, so that's your in internal floor level. That's your that sloping line is your external uh, slope. Uh, that's the ground. That's the ground slope outside and to do uh, a floor i mean any kind of floor if we wanted to do a concrete floor you can see that it would be massive massive amount of work it would also if we wanted to do a block and beam floor it would be loads of work and quite expensive so because we were looking at doing sips on the actual build here uh, which would have been quick and saved the client a considerable amount of money because it would be all timber frame, then it made absolute sense to go for a raised timber floor also, uh, simply because of the ground differential. So what, what you'd have to do here to be able to install a raised timber floor is you'd have to excavate along this blue line and take out that little section here. Uh, so we're showing generally um, what the makeup would be. Now, this, this is your uh, front wall of the property. Uh, you got brick on the outside, you got insulation, and you got block on the inside, the plasterboard dab out. This would be on a traditional build, so I'm sorry, the, this little section uh, is aimed at showing you the floor rather than the wall, but I'm giving you a, I'm using it because it's, it's, a, it's a good little section. Uh, now, what people don't necessarily realize is that if you want to put in a suspended timber floor is that you've got to have this at least 150 mil of uh, open space below it. And this bit cannot just be earth or soil. In other words, you can't just dig out and then leave it and then build on top. What you've got to do is you've got to put down some, you've got to scrape out or excavate out. Uh, again, what you see what it says, a uh, hundred mil slab on hard uh, on hardcore. So this is your hardcore, which again is you know it's basically uh, rubble, uh, blinded with uh, loads of sand on the top, and then get some concrete onto it. So we're looking at about a hundred mil, and then on top of that, you build your sleeper honeycombed dwarf walls, and you start putting your flooring structure in. But What's essential is that that void and the air bricks at the front and at the back. So in other words, it's got to be a clear airflow along underneath um, the actual suspended floor. So that's it. That's what it would kind of look like in practice. So what we do is let's 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 move across here. 
Uh, we're looking at a timber suspended floor detail section. This is something uh, we would give to building control if we were putting this in. And what it shows is, it shows the rubble and the hardcore, shows some concrete, uh, shows the gap here. Uh, now, we're looking at it from on, on side, so you'd see the gap, then you'd see the insulation, then you'd see the floor on top. Uh, but what, what I just scratched this up together quickly to show you from the other end, which is uh, you've, got your, uh, you've got your rubble, you've got your concrete, and then on top of that, you build up these sleeper walls. These are walls now that would be in the middle uh, to support the floors. So you might only need one. Like in this case, you might only need one running that way if the joists were running from side to side. Uh, let's have a little look at it there. So if the joists ran that way, all you'd want is a, uh, a sleeper wall all the way down here. Now that sleeper wall would be honeycombed. Uh, and I'll show you what a honeycombed wall would look like. That's it. It's a little short dwarf wall that's honeycombed, which means 50% is airflow uh, flowing freely through. So you would build that one uh, along here and then your joists would either sit on uh, f probably here because this wall is existing and this is new. Here is no problem. They'd sit on the uh, new stud that we're building on this one. Uh, you probably do, you might uh, bolt on 4x2s, 6x2, 8x2, depending. You'd bolt, on, bolt that on and then uh, rest your uh, floor joists uh, on top. So, uh, given the span, which is about 4 metres, what's the span? 4.5 metres, we would definitely put one sleeper dwarf wall along the middle and i'll show you what that would that would look like first off if this was a and if, if, if this was a new build this is probably what it would look like uh, but it, it it's a possibility if it's if this was existing then you might yeah as i say you could put a plate onto the wall and then use uh, joist hangers you could also build a little bit up on the new concrete floor where you've excavated remember the rubble and all that and then the concrete you put some blocks in the build up and you could do basically a dwarf wall again on either end so there's numerous ways of doing it and it's it's, it's all feasible this is where you would this is a little detail section this is showing the wall and the foundation and then this is inside where you've scraped out and you've put your bit of concrete on top of rubble and you have your void. This is where the new floor joist would sit on the inner leaf of an outer wall. Where basically you'd have your DPC, then you'd have your floor plate, then you'd have your joists coming out of the wall and then you'd have your uh, floorboard skirting, etc. And the walls get built again around those joists. The inner leaf gets built around it. And they've been doing that for hundreds of years, that kind of system, uh, and it works absolutely fine. Uh, this is another way here. Oh no, we've had a look at that already. So yeah, what I wanted to look at was down here because I thought this was a, a decent... I bring in, by the way, I, I hunt for these detailed sections online just to try to and just to try to get, look at the project from several different ways because I, what, what I notice, uh, well, even for myself, is that there's one detail section I look at and it doesn't make sense. And then I look at a, a detail section telling a different story, but yet conveying the same message and it makes complete sense. So <clears throat> if we're looking here at this one isn't great quality, but it serves the purpose. Uh, outside wall, it's your hardcore, your concrete base. These are your sleeper walls. And what I wanted to emphasize here, and the reason for introducing this little poor quality section, was that on the top of your sleeper wall, you have to have DPC. Just, you can never forget that. Uh, then you have, uh, what we have is uh, timber, and that's a timber, We basically a plate. We call it a timber plate, and then your joists. 
top of your joists uh, insulation don't forget will be filled in, filling in between the joists and then you'll have your floor finishes don't forget um, the, and this is the, this is the key thing these are honeycombed walls they are not solid walls because you've got to allow airflow to go in between or to go from front to back this end you'll have the same uh, air bricks and uh, the number of air bricks will be determined by the amount of space and how long the building is uh, sometimes it's nearly every second brick um, okay this little section I threw in because this one was to give you an idea if you're having a suspended floor and you're doing on the floor heating this is a really simple way of doing it so you have your joists and what you do is get a few battens onto your joists get a bit of uh, insulation down 70 mil say floor insulation and then uh, use the better quality insulation because if you use the really cheap stuff then uh, these clips won't stick you put the clips in they just pop out so good quality insulation thinner perhaps if you want to cut back on cost thinner good quality insulation and then 16 mil tube gets laid in that kind of fashion uh, anyway you'd be getting a, a you know a, a specification and detail drawing from the company that's doing your on the floor heating but I'm just giving you a guide that it's very very easy to install uh, on the floor heating on a suspended floor on a suspended timber floor now what have we got here these are the uh, this is actually the building regs um, editorial that goes with this timber floor in other words that's all the information that gets added along with that detail section to convey to the builder and building control uh, what the specification is so this is standard and it's current um, Okay, joists, Celotex, ventilation to floor, etc. Gives you all the details. So it's a general guide, and that's, as I say, um, that goes in with every project where we will be doing a timber suspended floor. That will be going to building rigs. Uh, what else? Uh, this one I've had a look at. This one we've looked at. Let's go back to the detailed section itself. Um, walls can be whatever I mean, because you might be doing a sips extension you could be doing a brick outer skin block inside but you have your either way you'll have your walls but this is generally the makeup starting again excavate as you need to uh, get your rubble in blind it with sand get it some concrete down there looking at a hundred mil but you might get away with 70 as long as you've got a nice flat surface uh, that you can build on and you know, when I say build I mean build these dwarf honeycombed walls you see on here you've got your DPC DPC has to be on top of the honeycombed wall and uh, the timber plate sits on top of your DPC your joists sit on your timber plate insulation sitting between the joists normally uh, we would have a little a couple of little battens Celotex sitting in so that rather than dropping it to the bottom uh, we'd keep the Celotex near the top then you have your floor covering that could be uh, <clears throat> uh, 8 by 2 you know man-made interlocking floorboards or it could be floorboards uh, you know uh, brand new semi-engineered or whatever whatever it is you're doing you could go directly onto the joist whatever you want doing it uh, if you're doing the heating if you're doing the underfloor heating just have a little look at the diagram down there again this one um, that's about it really so <coughs> um, in certain circumstances the raised um, the raised floor is a great idea the raised timber floor as against uh, as against doing any doing concrete you know we can all often fall into this trap of doing what we always do oh yeah it's just going to be concrete we just fill it all up with rubble well all of that is work and it's loads of concrete and it's not great for the environment so if you want to cut costs uh, and this is very quick this is all done very quick so this is how you cut your costs really and uh, cut your time and do something that's really really good 
uh, and it's it's a, the equivalent of a SIPS flooring system. And if you're doing a SIPS walls and a SIPS roof, that would be fantastic because, you know, within a few weeks, basically once you've excavated and got this bit in here, as in the uh, concrete on top of your uh, rubble, uh, once, once, you, once you build up a little bit here with trench blocks or whatever you're going to use, engineering brick, once you get it up to DPC, it, the build will go really quick because a couple of carpenters there, or joiners on site, will really get that up very, very quick. Um, okay, there's nothing more I can tell you, but what I would say to you is on this particular um, uh, tutorial, what I'm going to do, because uh, I think a lot of people would like to copy this, so you can, you can just use the video to see what I've written in, and then you know draw it up yourself so because you're going to use it if you're doing drawings for clients you're going to be doing you're going to be doing this on routinely so all you got to do is do one on cad draw one up on cad and um it's good for all, any future projects and then as the building regs change in the future you just tweak it and it's good for another thousand drawings etc and then this is the editorial that goes with it but what i'm going to do to help is uh i'm going to pop this editorial into the description for the video which means uh you can just copy and paste as against having to rewrite it okay um that's it detail section for raised timber floor you now have all the information you want so use it add it to your drawings and uh that's fine i'll see you on the next video thanks very much for watching bye bye now